Hello and welcome to You've Seen It Before, Movie Reviews with Connections in Mind, and welcome to my reaction series to each and every episode of the seventh and final season of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, if you've never seen any of my reaction series before now, this is just my short-form reaction series where I give a brief summation of that uh, the most recent episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as soon as it comes in, as well as my thoughts on the episode, what I thought worked, what I thought didn't work, as well as some analysis as to certain plot developments and character arcs that may seem familiar to you and where you may have seen them before. Now, uh, this will be a full spoiler review of the most recent episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so if you have not seen the most recent episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. before watching this video, I will recommend stopping this at this point and coming back later after you've watched it, because from this point on, it will be full spoilers. So without further ado, let's get into Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 7, Episode 1, entitled The New Deal where we come uh, uh, right off where we left off in the previous season, where the, uh, the team, the, remnant, uh, the remnants of S.H.I.E.L.D., the team are on the Zephyr. They find themselves transported back in time to the year 1931, uh, in which the Chronicoms, the, uh, the alien-slash-robot race, uh, uh, have gone back in time with the, the purpose of destroying S.H.I.E.L.D. before uh, uh, in its uh, infancy so that it cannot st uh, stop them in the future when they try to turn uh, Earth into a new, the, their new home world. And uh, because of that, they uh, they go back in time to try and uh, uh, sabotage key moments in the uh, the history of Shield, and the team finds themselves having to stop the Chronicoms in the past, and uh, they enlist the help of uh, uh, Phil Coulson as a, uh, a upgraded LMD who they say has the uh, the knows the history of Shield better than anyone uh, alive, and uh, he has holds uh, he has certain knowledge and clues that will keep the team one step ahead of the Chronicoms. And in this episode, we find the uh, the Chronicoms uh, aiming for uh, a person uh, in the infancy of Shield. Uh, and in and around um, New York in 1931, and the team has to uh, stop the Chronicom's plan, uh, and it, the, the whole thing revolves around an appearance by then-Governor Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who they believe uh, is the... Uh, is a uh, is the target of the Chronicons, but is in fact a seeming nobody uh, in the bootleggers operation before even the SSR even existed. Who, uh, if you know your Shield history, has the last name of Malik, and uh, that uh, they discover that at the end of this episode. Uh, so all that's happened in this episode. What I thought worked um, about this episode as it went on. Um, First of all, I just dig this uh, this concept of uh, of the time going back in time to stop a force from uh, from uh, sabotaging key moments in history, and that's pro that's going to be sounds like it's one of one of the main focus of this final season is going to be. They're going to be jumping around to various por uh, uh, parts of Shield history, so starting in the 30s and then going all the way back up to the present day and uh, everything in between. Um, very similar in concept to another show which I was uh, very happy about, and I think it got cut short way too soon. Uh, was Timeless, in which um, another uh, organization goes back in time to sabotage uh, key moments in history to take down an organization, in that case Rittenhouse, uh, and it was up to our heroes to try and uh, prevent that and keep history flowing the way it's supposed to, but of course... Uh, inevitably, when things go back in time, there will be changes that ripple into the present, uh, and who know, uh, that will undoubtedly um, ha happen throughout the course of this season. Um, I thought this. Uh, I first of all, I really liked the uh, the old style uh, uh, title sequence that they did at the beginning, where that they show Marvel's Agents of Shields. 
uh, in like 30 style uh, title card with the the year uh, the year and the studio on the bottom. It was uh, I liked that touch. It was a very nice period touch. I hope they update that uh, design and keep that. Um, that thing going, they may change like the style of it, of the titles as they jump to different points in history. I, that I'm really looking forward to seeing if they do that. Also, um, Patton Oswalt, uh, who is uh, who has been played the recurring Koenig character in several seasons of the series, um, uh, assuming different identities. Always the the general consensus is he's a clone of some sort or. Uh, there's some sort of hinkiness going on, and we see the earliest, uh, the earliest yet example of the Koenig line. And um, even though it's a different personality, he's a pretty good, uh, uh, pretty good character in that. It was always fun to to see him. And um, I think uh, we'll finally get some decent uh, closure uh, uh, for certain things uh, about. Um, uh, the uh, the relationship between the team and Coulson because uh, as he kind of alludes to in this uh, in this episode he dies and comes back and then he dies and then he comes back this is now uh, the the third recorded um, uh, resurrection here the first obviously being his original uh, from the end of the uh, event the first Avengers movie to the beginning of Agents of Shield the second one being when he actually you know died died and um, the, uh, between seasons uh, four and f uh, or five and six, and then six, where he had the uh, the his body sent back in time, and now he's and then he was possessed by an alien, and then he died again, and now he's resurrected one more time as an LMD. So, just hopefully this season will give us all some closure on these characters and the well as the relationship between them. And I like uh, the dynamic now that he notes in this episode where. Both he and Quake are now superheroes, and they that is a further addition to their relationship as a you know father type daughter type relationship that they had going on. Um, so that'll be interesting to see going forward. Um, I just hope that uh, going forward, maybe um, I know by the part of the shtick of the Chronicoms that they're sort of one note in how they uh, how they respond to certain things, but. Maybe just uh, they develop that a little bit more uh, as the Chrono comes. They just uh, that they're not in a, uh, that they become a little bit more than the um, than a like a one note enemy because uh, we've seen that Enoch, who is a Chrono can grow beyond his uh, limited programming and um, de develop character that way. So maybe these other Chrono will do that too. Who knows? Um, hope, I hope that happens going forward. Um, some other things that I saw uh, in this episode that seemed familiar to me. Um, the fact that these Chronicoms, um, are, uh, they assume identities of people in the past by using a device that basically rips their faces, the faces of these people off and then just leaves a faceless corpse. Um, not like, like cut off the thing, it's just like a melted flab of skin where their face was. Um, uh, as that's their corpse. It kind of reminded me of uh, that episode of, uh, of series two of uh, Doctor Who called uh, The Idiot's Lantern, where um, uh, the alien presence wasn't assuming their identity, but uh, the, the alien was sucking their essence into the TV or whatever and leaving behind a faceless body. So there was that to go off of. Also, um, the fact that Coulson is now an LMD and he's going to be more of a character going forward with this and he's kind of discovering his new abilities going forward in this new robot body. Um, I kind of I kind of think of uh, an early episode of uh, Stargate SG-1 where the team gets their consciousness downloaded into robot bodies and they slowly figure out what happened to them, but they also see some of the advantages of having superior strength and mental abilities. Um, so... That there's a element, but of course the uh, overall familiar element of this episode, really probably the season going forward, is that timeless um, comparison, which is why, like I said, I really dig this uh, that uh, comparison. I love that show. I like where uh, the fact that, that this last season of Age of the Shield is going to follow that direction, and I'm really uh, excited to see where they uh, go with this uh, this last season because I've been with this uh, this show since the very beginning and I like uh, I like how it's developed over the years and I think um, 
they probably could have gone a little bit more if they had, uh, if the creative team had been allowed to keep it uh, to keep the story going, or maybe if they could brought uh, bring back um, the thing uh, the the sh the show's continuity more in line with what was happening in the movies, like how it was in the original uh, in the original uh, season or two, um, and maybe they'll do that this uh, this season. That now that they're in the past, they can tie things back into the uh, older movie canon. Uh, that's always a possibility. Uh, but honestly, I think that se seven seasons is probably a good length for any show to end at this point. And I really hope that I'm really looking forward to see how they wrap up all these, uh, these, these storylines and these characters that have, that, that have been with this whole time. So those are my main thoughts on this first episode of the final season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. What did you think of this episode? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, what about my analysis? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Uh, are there any other comparisons that you saw that I missed? I probably missed something. Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate whatever audience I can get, um, especially in this, uh, this time of people hurting for, for new things to entertain, uh, uh, new things to review on, <laughs> right? So be sure to look for my uh, review of next week's uh, episode. I'll be getting my reviews up as soon as the episode ends on Wednesday nights, uh, hopefully. And uh, yeah, just again, thank you so much for watching. And if you like what you see on my channel, be it this uh, video or any other video on my channel, please give me a like, share it, especially subscribe. I'd very much appreciate it. Again, thank you so much for watching. You guys are the best. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. And just remember, there is nothing new under the sun, and yes, you have seen it before.